Ever look up at the sky and see the moon? Astronauts visiting the moon might look up and see Earth. Viewing our planet from a distance must be an amazing sight, but it also provides a powerful perspective on how we fit into a bigger story, the story of the solar system. How do we learn about this story? Well, for this, we look to the rocks. We can learn so much from the rocks. We can learn the age of the rocks, which will tell us when the moon formed and when the Earth uh, formed. We can learn about the ages of the surfaces of the bodies in our solar system. Everything that you might be able to figure out about our solar system, we can learn from the rocks. So we are at NASA Johnson Space Center in the Astro Materials Acquisition and Curation Office, but we just call it the Curation Office. Here we take care of all of the moon rocks that NASA brought back during the Apollo missions. We take care of them so that they can be studied by scientists around the world. They use instruments uh, to analyze something specific about the rocks and then they use the evidence they get from those measurements to, to tell a story. So the very first uh, mission, the Apollo 11 mission, they collected, at the very end of the mission, they collected a whole bunch of dirt, a whole bunch of the lunar soil, and they shoveled it into the rock boxes and then they brought it back. And then when they studied that, they found little tiny fragments of white rock inside. And they were able to reconstruct the history of how the entire moon formed from those one or two millimeter fragments of rock in that first sample. That white rock was very rare and it only formed under very special conditions, which they didn't think existed on the moon in 1968 before they went to the moon. And so when they found this rock, they're like, oh, well there must have been an ocean of magma covering the entire moon. So they couldn't prove it because the samples were too small, but when they got back the Apollo 15 samples, they found a bigger fragment of that same type of rock. They got a very ancient age, and from that, our impact origin of the moon and magma ocean theory for the moon, that all came from those first two samples. Wow, it seems there's a lot we can learn from rocks, and technology has changed a lot since we first brought them back. But what new instruments do we have now that we didn't have back when the samples were first collected? So it used to be when we were studying the rocks, we would do everything physically. And so we would take a rock and then we would use a hammer and just smash it and look and see what was inside. That's not very efficient. And so now we have an X-ray computed tomography scanner, just like the medical CT scans. And what that lets us do is actually scan the rocks ahead of time and then use three-dimensional viewing software to look inside, identify features that are of interest, and very specifically target those uh, when we smash it with a hammer. And so that lets us be much more intentional with how we use the samples. During the Apollo missions, they collected about 2,200 individually numbered samples. And up until about four years ago, we had saved six samples in order to be able to study them with modern techniques, really get the most out of them. So the Apollo Next Generation Sample Analysis was looking at unanalyzed samples using modern technology and a big uh, consortium of, of scientists. With technology coming so far, it's amazing how much we're able to learn from rock samples. But there's another incredible rock-related tool that will knock your socks off. And here to tell us more about it is Erica Blumenfeld from NASA's Johnson Space Center. Have you ever wanted to explore the moon or the inner solar system yourself? We developed Astro Materials 3D so you could do that. Astro Materials 3D is an interactive, virtual library of NASA's Astro Materials collections, and you can explore them for yourself in the Astro Materials 3D Explorer, which allows you to virtually manipulate and rotate and look inside of these rocks from space. How cool is it that anyone can study moon rocks today? With powerful tools like Astro Materials 3D at our fingertips, it's exciting to explore and learn more about the stories rocks tell. But don't just take my word for it. The work that we do here in the Curation Office at NASA is really about preserving the samples for future generations. And we've had these rocks for 50 years. We've been learning new stuff about them every year for the last 50 years. And so when we go back to the moon and collect a bunch of new samples, we're going to learn even more about the moon and the rest of the solar system. The story is in the rock. And that, to me, captured my imagination that rocks could be scrolls of knowledge, that they could be storybooks, that if you know how to read the language in the rock, you can unravel the stories and the mysteries within them. And it's meaningful to, to be able to shine light on these stories and to share them with the public. My hope is that we can inspire the next generation of explorers of all kinds, whether that's exploring the lunar surface itself or exploring the samples that come back. And hopefully our work will open their minds to an adventure that they'll take into their own lives. 
Advances in technology are continuing the efforts to help us learn more about the stories rocks tell. Thanks to Ryan, Erica, and the team at NASA's Johnson Space Center, we are able to see and understand the moon story here in our world. And that rocks. See you next time.